To create a successful game, it is crucial to engage your players and motivate them to play. Leaderboards don't just help you to achieve that, but they can also be useful, for example, for skill-based matchmaking. In this video, we are going to check how I have created a leaderboard with PlayFab for my tower defense game. On the PlayFab online dashboard, you can easily create a bunch of leaderboards for your game. You can set if the leaderboard should be automatically reset, like daily or weekly ETC, and also the aggregation method. Now let's see how we can implement leaderboards in Unity. First of all, we will need a prefab for the leaderboard entries of the players. The prefab is very simple, it just holds a few texts for the player's name, rank and score. In the initData method, these texts will be loaded and also if the player is in the top 3, either a gold, a silver or a bronze medal image will be activated next to its rank. This prefab is used in the playfab leaderboard script. For each type of leaderboards, for example highest waves, highest key accounts or stuff like that, just create a game object and add the script to it. The global holder transform will be the parent of the player prefabs. On the bottom of the screen we will have a player prefab to the logged in user, so he can check his rank even if he is not among the top players. The game contains different difficulty levels, so there are different leaderboards for easy, medium and hard levels. We have a selector dropdown which is used for choosing from the difficulties. Now let's check the playfab leaderboard script. First of all, if the player is not logged in, we will disable the leaderboard button so it won't be shown to the player. After that, we call the getLeaderboardData method with the ID of the current leaderboard. Here we will call two PlayFab API methods. The first one gets the max results count players from the start position. For example, if the start position is 0 and the max results count is 100, then we will get the first 100 players. The next call will get the leaderboard entries near a player. In this case, since the player count is 1, the method will return the logged in user's ranking. Now, in the next method, you can see how we can update a player's statistics, like the maximum completed wave number. It is important to note that this value will not always override the current value. It depends on the leaderboard's aggregation method, which you can set on the online dashboard. For example, if you have a Clash of Clans style trophy system, then instead of overwriting the trophy count with the new value, you should set the aggregation method to sum, so the current value will be increased by the new value. 